Hi everybody, I'm Rick Hansen for the Foundations of Wellbeing program, here with Professor Robert Emmons, who's arguably the world's leading authority on gratitude. What are some of the special benefits of that aspect of gratitude, that movement out of self and recognition of you know, relatedness, inter, interdependent relatedness to the larger universe? Yeah, you know, uh, as I study gratitude, I've been doing this for, gosh, close to 15 years now, that there keeps being more and more findings and studies pointing to the benefits of gratitude uh, as a practice, as a way of being in life, as a fundamental orientation, as a personality trait. And there's so many layers and levels of gratitude. You know, we tend to think of it in terms of maybe politeness or saying thank you. And I think that's a big part of it, obviously. It's an element of civility that we could certainly use more of. But at a deeper level, it really is a way of looking at life and seeing the, the giftedness of life as a fundamental way of just negotiating and navigating our social worlds. And that becomes so important when we look at the benefits of gratitude, which go beyond the personal benefits. So yes, gratitude does make people happier. It creates a sense of uh, joy, a sense of purpose, a sense of passion. But there's also the, the uh, interpersonal benefits in terms of generosity, in terms of compassion. Grateful people are more giving. They're more forgiving. They just are more outwardly focused. And so you have the internal benefits, but also the external interpersonal strengths that develop and are reflected in the practice of gratitude, in the expression of gratefulness. So it's been said that silent gratitude is of, not, is of no use to anyone. I think that's so accurate. That gratitude is not just this feeling we keep bottled inside, but it expresses itself through behaviors, through actions, through deeds. And that's be when it becomes really strong and really has a strong impact on our social worlds. Wow. That was great. I love your phrase as well, the giftedness of life. This the inherent giftedness, you know, of living. Gratitude has so much um, application because you can view any, anything in your life as an opportunity for gratitude, as an opportunity for, you can literally construct gratitude at any moment in life, no matter what your circumstances are. And, you know, and I've talked to people and interviewed people who've gone through all sorts of terrible things. And you think, how can they possibly be grateful? You know, I mean, I think that's something we might discuss a little bit later, but yet they have the ability somehow to conjure up a sense of gratitude in the midst of suffering. And it's just amazingly inspirational to see when this happens. That's fantastic. So gratitude is not just for people who've been really fortunate or really lucky. Gratitude is, is for everyone. Any, any time, every place, I think uh, we can literally construct gratitude at any moment in our lives. What are some of the ways that people experience gratitude, especially in ordinary life? Yeah, uh, you know, um, one of the techniques that we developed and tried to, uh, to, to test out in a systematic way was gratitude journaling. We just ask people to stop, focus, reflect on a few things on a regular basis that they're grateful for and to just mindfully record these, write them down, uh, talk about them to friends, uh, type them into some sort of log where they could go back and remember and recollect and recall these over time. So, you know, journaling works really well. We find that people write gratitude letters. They write a letter of thanks to someone that they've never properly taken the time to thank. And then they spend some time crafting, creating this letter. And they make a visit with this person. They set up an appointment. They go and they talk to this person. They say, you know, how much this person has meant to them, doing things for them they could have never done for themselves. And that's very powerful. So gratitude is really based in memory. It's remembering all the people who have done things for us. So any way in which people can create gratitude involves reconstruction of memory because we're very forgetful. That's kind of the paradox. We're forgetful people. We forget things. And so gratitude is easily forgotten. Not deliberately. I don't think we become ungrateful or ingrates. We just sometimes neglect. We, we think other people know how much you know, they mean to us, but in fact, sometimes we, we forget to appreciate and to express that. So all the techniques that I've written about in my book are just really ways to help us remember to remember. And that's what gratitude requires. Mm. What are your personal gratitude practices? I actually, you know, I have different things that I do which set the occasion for gratitude. I wouldn't call them gratitude practices, but I do notice by engaging in certain activities, I'm much more to notice the gifts that other people provide for me. I'll give two examples. Well, actually, there are three. One is every day. 
So every day I just really try to monitor my thoughts and and the words I use, the language that I use. Yeah. So, and I noticed this in the people that I studied in my graduate research is that grateful people have a certain linguistic style. They use the words of being fortunate or luck, or they talk about gifts. They talk about how they don't deserve things. They use what looks like very thankful or even humble language so that they become good receivers of the benefits that they notice in their environment. So I try to traffic in the language of thankfulness. I find that if I can do that, it keeps me focused on things that I'm receiving from other people instead of expectations, instead of, you know, deserving this or scarcity or deficit, which is a different kind of language. So that's one thing I do on an everyday basis, or at least I try to. Two other activities I find very useful, which you don't normally associate with gratitude. One is, it's very seasonal, it's, it's gardening. It's growing things in a garden. Okay? I, think, and I think that's very interesting, too, when it comes to uh, kids. And parents ask, what's a good way to teach kids gratitude? It's one of the most common questions that I get. And uh, that's, that's really good because that, that gets them to focus on something that's outside of themselves. They get to learn what it takes to grow something, so they appreciate the effort behind something. I think that answers the question or satisfies this question, where do things come from? Right? We think of food as coming off the shelf at Safeway right? versus growing your own, which you know, I mean, creates a whole other set of expectations. You realize how much effort it takes to create something. You see where it comes from. You can trace its origins. I think that's a really powerful way of creating gratitude. Uh, and the other is also a G, gardening, gratitude, and then golf. Go I like to golf. Okay? I'm, I'm okay. I'm, I'm, I'm actually, golf is great because you can actually get better as you get older which makes it a spiritual quest because spirituality is something you can get better at or at least get more knowledgeable at as you get older as well. So when I'm out there playing golf, golf focuses you to be very mindful and very present focused. You really have to pay attention and notice things. Okay? But you can't be too present focused that you're not learning from the past. So you learn to deal with the mistakes you've made, but you also have to look ahead to the future and look at difficulties, possibilities, things that, um, you know, are challenges. So gratitude, or so golf is a great opportunity for me to experience gratitude. I, t I tend to think of golf as a gift, just to get out there and walk in grass on a nice place on a warm, sunny day with people that I like, that I'm playing with. I mean, that, to me, is an opportunity to practice and focus gratitude. There's what else? I mean, I can go on. We could do a whole hour about golf and gratitude. You know, there's, there's redemption. You make a mistake, you have a new opportunity on the next hole, uh, right? Uh, and so, yeah, so gardening, gratitude, and then traffic in the language of, of gratefulness or thankfulness are ways in which I try to practice gratitude. Mm -hmm. They might be different for different people, but you asked me, so that's what I do. So there you are, UC Davis, professor of psychology. Uh, we're wrapping up here, and I really want to encourage people to check out Bob's books on gratitude. Um, his most recent one being Gratitude Works. Um, he's also uh, quite prolific. He tweets. Uh, it would be <laughs> good to follow him on Twitter as well as he's got a Facebook page dedicated to gratitude. And um, just wrapping up here again, I want to thank you, Bob, and, and uh, you know, really appreciate you for the courage I think it's taken to dive into this territory and to make it your own in the ways that you bring um, not just academic, uh, you know, scholarly acumen to this, but obviously one heck of a huge heart. So thank you very much. For thank you. Very, very kind of you. Thank you. Appreciate yeah. that.